Later, folks. <clears throat> Welcome to their Stu's Game Reviews live stream. Let me start the Twitch as well today. All right, we are twitching. Hey, everybody. Um, so wanted to play uh, the new Colossal Cave game on the stream. I have uh, I've played it before. I it's hard. It's a very hard game. I want to talk about it. You know, as I play, I'm, gonna, I'm planning to do a formal review video of this, like an uploaded video. But I also wanted to play through it in, in a live stream. Figure now is as good a time as any. So a couple of folks have already done it. Um, Adventure Game Hotspot posted a, a video. It was more of an uploaded video, but he basically showed how to get all the points by like uh, sort of speed running it, I guess. And uh, Adventure Game Geek tried to tried to finish it with all the points, but he ran a lamp. That's the that's the real problem with this game, which we'll talk about um, as as I go through it. But I want to start by saying, actually, let's start let's start by actually um, loading it up, at least the. Um, the intro, intro screen. Cygnus Entertainment, of course, the new company from Ken and Roberta Williams. Colossal Cave. Now, is it working? Is the audio coming through? Let me... I'm not sure. Can you guys hear the audio from the game? It's... Actually, my, my audio is really quiet, isn't it? Let me crank it up a little bit. Testing. Testing, testing. It's really low. Why is it so low? I have some weird audio issues. Like, one day something changes. Testing... Testing one two three. Testing one two three. All right, I I think that's probably better. Now, but let me know if you're if you're here. Let me know how the audio is for me, and I'll make the game a little bit louder. But I I can't tell if the audio for the game is working or not. That's the problem I'm having. So, I'm um, waiting till someone shows up in the chat and we'll ask them that question when they whoever arrives. But in the meantime, I guess a few things I want to say about this game. So, in case anybody doesn't know, Colossal Cave uh, historically is regarded as the first adventure game. It is. Uh, it was created in 1976, or approximately, for mainframe computers. It was a text adventure. It's based on the real-life uh, place called Mammoth Cave, which is in Kentucky, and there's a national park called Mammoth Cave National Park, which you can you can go visit. And apparently, um, that used to be one of the top two tourist destinations in the United States, uh, along with Niagara Falls. And I know that because I was there, and it was re it's very cool. I, I definitely recommend going there at some point if you're able to go. And basically, this guy Will Crowther uh, was a caver. He was a cave explorer. Him and his his wife at the time, and there was actually Mammoth Cave was was part of these two different there was these two cave systems that connected to form this gigantic cave but they didn't know that they connected they weren't sure they thought it did and uh, apparently uh, this guy's Will Crowther's wife was at the time was able to squeeze through this very very tight spot in the cave and prove that it was actually connected and it was like the biggest cave in the world I believe. So, in real life, it's called Mammoth Cave. In this game, it's called Colossal Cave. The original game was just really called Adventure. And um, that's why you know, we get the adventure game genre came from Adventure. Again, it was a text adventure, but Will Crowther, I think originally when he was building this thing, he tried to simulate the experience of being in this cave. So, the, the, one of the hard parts about this game is the map is very convoluted. If you're trying to draw a map of this, like you probably like will get you pull your hair out because, you know, in a nice adventure game, like you go in a room this way and you come back out that way and whatever. But in a real cave, there's twisting and turning passages all over the place. So you might go in a long tunnel to get to the next you know, quote unquote room, which is what they actually call them in caves. If you're like in a, in a big open area, they call it a room, I believe. Um, and so it's very hard to map. So he created sort of a simulation of the cave, 
And then he added some fantasy elements from, from Tolkien and whatnot. There's some dwarves in there, and there's some magic spells and and some you know treasure and make it like more exciting than just going to the cave in real life. Well, that's that's pretty cool too. Like I said, excuse me. And um, then this guy, he sort of he he, fit, he didn't really finish the game. He had like some some kind of um, partially done version. He left it on one of the mainframe computers. Uh, I don't remember where he, where he was at, but I th I think um, it was it was picked up by another guy named Don Woods at Stanford, I believe. And this is all from memory, so if I if I say something wrong, I apologize. My memory is usually pretty decent on these things. Um, this guy Don Woods picked it up and finished it and made it into a complete game. And basically, there's like 350 points you can get. And there's a whole bunch of treasures, and the idea is you, you it's essentially a treasure hunt. You go find treasures, you bring them back to the starting point, you get points, and then there's a there's an end game at the end as well. Um, it's a pretty good game. I played it back in the day. I'm like I'm that old, um, unfortunately, and um, I enjoyed it. I, I I was able to beat it right away. It took some time to figure that out. I didn't even attempt to get all the points. That wasn't really the point. The point was to complete the game, which I did eventually manage to do. Um, and uh, you know, this was the inspiration for a lot of other developers afterwards. Like basically, a lot of people play this. It was Scott Adams, um, who created tons of text adventures on the early computers, TRS-80, Apple II, etc. He played this adventure game, and he's like, I want to try to see if I can do this on a microcomputer as opposed to a mainframe. Well, I can't believe nobody's in here yet. Like This is like almost... I guess people are here, but they're not talking. If you're here, please say please say hello. Um, so anyway, Scott Adams is one of the people that, that did that. Um, Warren Robinette, who created Adventure for the Atari 2600, that the, the, that, the idea was to try to create an adventure-like game graphically. Um, and then Roberta Williams played it as well, and she was like, let me try to do this with graphics. That's where we got Mystery House and the whole Sierra Online you know, publishing empire. So this game has been around for a long time. I I'm guessing that most modern gamers, even if they're very into adventure games, have not played it, though, because of the text adventure interface. So recently, in the last few years, um, you know, Ken and Roberta decided to create this new company, Cygnus Entertainment, oh, and... Uh, you know, for what, basically to get back into the gaming uh, business, I guess, and, and I, I would guess more of a passion project than to make money off it. I think they probably have enough money, um, but, you know, they, they wanted to create something new, and they decided to have it as a new remake of Colossus Cave, which is basically the public domain, and uh, make it all graphical and 3D and, and, and cool looking. And you know, that's what I'm going to play here. Sorry for all the talking. But I, I did want to give some context as I go go into the game. Now, I've already... This game's been out for like a week already, almost. Not quite a week. At least, you know, several days. And there's been a lot of reviews already that I've seen. And honestly, this game has some flaws. It's not a perfect game. Part of the reason for that is that it's based on... It's like really a straight remake of the original. Hey, always asleep. How you doing? Uh, can you tell me if, if the audio was working... Like, can you hear the audio from the game right now? Because I can't tell if it's working or not. It should be just some sound of, like, water or whatnot. But anyway, um, what was I saying? I lost, lost my train of thought there. Um, yeah, so, I, but the, the game is not perfect, primarily because it's a straight-up one-for-one copy. Okay, good. It's one for one remake of the original game. So where the original game you know, had some flaws because it was the first one, it's not perfect, obviously. They basically retained those flaws. That's a source for most of the flaws. There's a couple of other ones too, but I I think the reviews that I've seen have been way too harsh in general. Um, most, I mean, the biggest complaint I see people complain about the graphics. They're like not good enough graphics. Or some people say they're PS3 era. Some people say they're PS2 era. I mean, the graphics to me look pretty freaking nice. Maybe I'm just kind of so old school, <laughs> but like, I don't have any complaint about the graphics at all. And actually, I'll, I'll show you guys in a second. I'll boot this thing up. So I'm gonna I want to talk through some of that. I'm gonna make like I said a, a, an actual you know review video of this of this game, but I wanted to stream it now. Hey Mark, how's it going? Good to see you too. 
Now, the one thing that, that I'm having a problem with here that not, that it seems like I'm the only one is the I, I I'm experiencing some crashes in this game, and my laptop is definitely able to handle it. You, you didn't see before the screen it says I was running it full screen before. Now I'm running it in a window so it's, I can stream a little better, and uh, it basically says it's running at a ten at a thousand FPS because this this computer is pretty good. <laughs> And there's no reason why anything should crash. I, I I haven't had any problems with anything else so far. I've only had this laptop for a few months, but, you know, I haven't had any issues with anything else. It seems like it's a Unity problem, but I'm not sure if it's a problem with the Unity or the actual game. There are people from um, Cygnus, some the technical folks who are trying to help me, and probably it would be solved already, honestly, if I had the time to, like, to spend around, you know, all the time with it and, and troubleshoot it, which I don't, unfortunately. So hopefully we won't have any bug, any crashes now. What I've noticed in the past is if I reboot, um, it seems to work, you know, fine. You know, as long as I don't run anything else or do anything else first. So I'm hoping that's going to be the case here. There, I mean, I don't know if it's a memory issue or what, but I'm, it seems like I'm the only person that's having this problem. So it might just be something related to my computer. Uh, but regardless, you know, your forewarned is forearmed. Mark says, going from text to PS3 era graphics is a huge upgrade. Here. I totally agree, and I think if you're complaining about the graphics of this game, frankly, you're a little bit spoiled. But regardless, let's let's start it up, and you'll see what I mean. When it crashes, by the way, it's always on that look. <laughs> wow. All right, so now you see what I'm talking about. I'll say it's always on that loading screen. And by the way, I've tried to, uh, to uninstall the game and reinstall the game. All right, let's, let's try that again. Hopefully that won't happen again. <laughs> it's like literally only crashes when it's loading. So it makes me think that there's some, some issue with the game and it's not me. But I don't know for sure. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I might have to reboot again, in which case I talk too much before I started this thing up here. But you see this? Like, I, I, I'm the only person having this problem, apparently, but uh, what happened now? I lost my mouse. There we go. Okay. Let's try one more time. If I can. Okay, here we go. I might have, I, I apologize, guys. I might have to reboot because uh, did my did my OBS freeze now? I see like I froze or something. Oh jeez! All right, hold on. Hold on! Hold on! Crap. My good word here. Am I connected? It's still frozen. Oh, this. Oh, there. Okay, it's connected now. All right, good. Oh boy, so much fun. Right, let's try this again. It's how I close even more stuff. Let's try this again. Come on, let's go. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, thank God. All right. All right. I mean, like, does this seem like it's my fault? Because I, I don't think so, but whatever. Te the bug will get fixed, I'm sure. All right, so would you like instructions? Now, there's there's a pro there's one problem with this game. In the original that I played, the one at least the, one, the Microsoft Adventure version, which was the one that they brought out for TRS-80, Apple II, and eventually IBM PC, Microsoft created. It was the first game for the IBM PC, I believe. It was an early game for the TRS-80. Well, that's not really for the TRS-80, but whatever. Um, I played that version. I streamed it at one point. It's fully text. And they ask you if you want instructions, and then they also tell you at the end of the instructions there's some hints. Now... It, what it tells you, if you actually do all that, is that 
taking the instructions has two effects. One is that you lose points by taking the instructions. That's important to know, but this game does not tell you that as far as I've seen. Number two, it makes the lamp last much longer because they figure if you take instructions, you're a beginner, and therefore you need to, you know, you basically need more time. So if you want to get the full 350 points, you cannot take the instructions. I'm going to take the instructions now just so we can listen to them, and then we're going to try to play without the instructions, which makes it much harder. But let's at least listen to the instructions so we won't crash again. Somewhere nearby is Colossal Cave. Oops, okay, I gotta stay in the window. Where others have found fortunes and treasure and gold. It is rumored that some who enter are never to be seen again. And magic is said to permeate the cave. I know of places, actions, and things. Take me with you, and I will be your eyes and hands. Keep watch on your compass. It will guide you through the cave. I know of a few special objects, such as a black rod hidden in the cave. Take these objects and carry them in your inventory, which will show you the items you're carrying. Some objects have side effects. For instance, the rod scares the bird, and usually people unsuccessfully manipulating an object are attempting something beyond their or my capabilities and should try a different tack. So two things here. First of all, one thing that everybody praised in the reviews is the narrator. Everybody likes the voice of the narrator, and I happen to like him too. Second of all, I saw a common complaint in a lot of the reviews that they couldn't figure out the, how to take the bird, or they had to, they, they're, like, they're upset that they, when they learned afterwards that the rod scares the bird. It freaking tells you in the, right in the instructions of the first page, so if you don't read that, that is not the fault of the developers, I'm sorry. Take heed that cave passages turn often. And realize that exiting one room to the north does not always guarantee hey, Papa. That <laughs> the yeah, south. So. And just because you enter a room one time without issue does not mean that you won't be rechanneled elsewhere the next. To get full credit for a treasure, you must leave it safely in the little building. Though you do get partial credit for just locating the treasure. Points get lost for getting killed or for quitting, though the former costs you more. Also, points are based on how much of the cave you've managed to explore. There is a large bonus just for penetrating the deeper cave, distinguishing the beginners. From the I get that bonus battle. very often for penetrating the deeper cave. There are other cave. ways to determine whether you've survived some of the more harrowing sections. And if you think you've found all the treasures, just keep exploring for a while. There's more to discover. Occasionally, I may offer hints if you seem to be having trouble. If I do, I'll warn you in advance how much it will cost your score to accept the hints. Good luck. So unfortunately they forgot to include, it seems like, the text where it says that the instructions cost you points and they make the lamp last longer. But So if you know those two things, yeah, <laughs> Carl Sanders, if you know those two things, then you basically understand that the way to play this game really is the first couple times you play it with the instructions on so that you get the extra lamp time and you, you're able to actually explore and look around and figure out to solve the puzzles. And then when you're ready to go for all the all the points, like basically you have to speed run the game essentially. You should have already solved all the puzzles at that point, and then you know you're going in and trying to do a speed run, and that's where you turn the instructions off. But unfortunately, they didn't really say that, so I, I definitely think that's a legitimate complaint if you don't have that that bad background information. So let's and I'll talk a little more about that as we go along. But let's let's start the game. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Oh, so they they added auto mapping, which is nice. So we'll use that. We'll just take a look at that at least. All right, good. Okay, so this is the this is the graphics. You are standing at the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. A small stream flows out of the building and down a gully. Now, now keep in mind, this is not like max settings or anything because, like, I'm just running this in a window right now, and so it's not going to be the best resolution that 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 it does. But like, like here's a tree, okay, like. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm pretty, like, satisfied with these graphics. Like, I don't really see a problem with them. Like, here... Here's the water. Here's, like, water effects. Like, does that look bad to anybody? And 16 more graphics. <laughs> I mean, this... I, I, I think this is, like, good graphics, personally. Again, it's a little bit scaled down, the resolution, because I'm not running it full screen. 
They have, they have a VR mode also. I don't, I'm not sure if it's out yet, but it's going to be out. But, like, I mean, definitely the intro part here, they, they did a very good job, in my opinion. Um, but by the way, the way it starts, is like, you, you have this, you know, you can sort of go up here. And you can run, by the way, if you want to. But you can go up here, and there's, like, a, you know, there's nowhere to go. You have walked up a hill, still in the forest. The road slopes back down the other side of the hill. That is a building in the distance. So if I hit uh, I, I get my inventory, which says you're not carrying anything. Now, one thing about the original game, which is carried over here, which is hard, is that you have a limited amount of slots in your inventory, which I think it's either seven or eight. This is the map. So the original Miss Graphics. Uh, hey there, hey, Lutfi McCarum. Hey, welcome to the channel. I don't, I don't really think it's that bad, personally. I think it's way better than the original Miss Graphics. So there's an auto map here, um, which is nice. Hey, Pirate Gamer Boy. I mean, again, right now I don't have the full resolution turned on, but, like, this is, this is first of all, Mist, the original Mist did not have, I don't know if you're trolling or what, but the original Mist did not have um, full 3D walking. It had node base graphics. Real Mist had the, had the full 3D walking, but it was not as good as this. Mark says not cutting age graphics doesn't need to be. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna exit the game because I want to start a game without instructions, just so I have a chance to get the full points. So new game, hopefully it doesn't crash. All right, no. What settings am I using? I think right now it's running like. Uh, 12, 12 the by twelve hundred by nine hundred or something like that. A small stream flows out of the just out so I can fit in a window. Going. I mean, it's not it's not supposed to be photorealistic. It's not like a it's it's more cartoony in terms of whatever. But anyway, all right. So you go in here. It's like Sierra style icons, which is cool. Also, there's a compass at the top, which is really nice because the cave patches are very twisty. So you can orient yourself with the compass. Now, this is the place you're supposed to bring your treasures back and whatever. Um, the problem is because of inventory limits, I'm not going to take everything right now. I'll take these keys. And I'm going to take the lamp. That's really important. But I'm going to leave the food and the water for now. Um, again, you can run if you want. I like the sound effects, too. You think Miss 2021 looks better? I haven't played Miss 2021, so it may be the case. Twisty, and they all like as well. Yes. <laughs> the maze is, is intact here. Miss 2021, I, I guess I have to play that. But, like, I, 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 Mark said before, and I agree with him, compared to the original text, this is a huge upgrade. Maybe I'm thinking about it the wrong way, but, like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very happy with these graphics. So I'm trying not to waste moves because so the way this works, okay, in terms of, like, it probably doesn't matter now because the lamp is off, but the way that it works in terms of counter for the lamp is you can walk around any room that you're in. It doesn't count as a turn because in the text adventure, it wouldn't count as a turn either. Um, I haven't played Abduction yet either. I have to play that. Um, but any action you take, including looking at something, counts as a turn, and you lose lamp. And that's a problem, actually, because in the original text adventure, when you walk into a room, you get a description. You were in this room, blah, 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 blah. In this game, if you want to get the description, you have to click on the eye and get the description, and that takes up a turn. It's like typing look in the text adventure, and that's, that's a problem. That shouldn't be like that. That makes your lamp drain, drain faster than it should be. But let's leave that aside for now. All right, so Set of keys. I have the keys and use. You have unlocked the grid. And now open it. And now, hopefully it doesn't crash, because this were a crash for me quite a few times. Damn it! <laughs> I can't believe this crap! Alright, am I, am I freaking... My video froze again. All right, I have to close. Hold on a second, guys. I'm Hold on. I 
I, I, I may have to delay this stream until I can uh, fix the technical issues with this thing. I'm going to try this again. Colossal crash. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not helping. I'm not helping their, their reputation here. I don't think. But let's try this again. Right. Painful. And again, like sometimes I have no problem with it, and sometimes I don't. I'll, yeah. Sometimes I, I, I do. Sometimes I do. I'm running it like I don't know. Oh, wait, I didn't want to do that. Seven and run. Standing at the end of a road before a small brick. If I actually get into the cave, I'll save it. They do like, Doo -doo. I don't know why they use that sound effect. If it crashes again, I might, I might end this stream. <laughs> Brass, set of keys. Cause like I can't Unlocked. play if I can't play. Okay, everybody pray for the game. It freaking like crashed like, it, like this time it crashed OBS also. All right, well, I, I don't know why today I'm having such bad luck with it because part of the problem is also they keep releasing updates and then like, um, you know, it works maybe it worked before it doesn't work now, but I I really wanted to show you guys this game tonight but it looks like it's not happening. I'm gonna have to work out the technical issues first with uh, the the developers. And then do this again a different day. I apologies, everybody. I hate pirate. Hey, gamers, Grotto. Yeah, I remember the game suspended, but I actually never played it. Apparently, if you know what you do, you can beat it in seven moves. But anyway, regardless, this I, I'm disappointed, honestly. Like that, 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 that I don't know why I keep having this crash problem. But I'm gonna give for now the, the benefit of the doubt and assume it's my fault somehow. Um, and I'm gonna try to get it fixed, and then. We'll do this again when I actually get this thing working. So, apologize for wasting everyone's time. At least I got to talk a little bit about the game. Uh, yeah, it happens even if I'm not streaming. It's not. A, it's not a streaming. It's not a. It happens to you when it crashes. It like you know sometimes freezes up OBS or crashes OBS, but it crashes regardless what, I'm, what else I'm doing. If it's gonna crash, it crashes. So, um, yeah, that sort of sucks. Um, I don't know if I should delete this video or, or what, but I will. I'm gonna try to fix the technical issues and do this again a different day. So, for now, my my sincerest apologies to everybody on behalf of myself and my bad computer and the developers and Unity and whatever's causing the problem. But we'll do this again soon, and uh, you guys are are awesome for being here. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I appreciate the sentiment. I know you've had some technical difficulties on your stream, also, although. But you, that's why you should stick with the books, the game books, because those don't have technical difficulties. Yeah, thank you, Always Asleep. I appreciate it as well. And uh, I'll talk to all you guys soon. In the meantime, uh, peace out, and I'll get, get to work on fixing this thing. So long, everybody.